This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. Prime Minister Morape elaborates on UN vote. UOG and Teleforming District sign MOU. And Wakunai LLG in the autonomous region of Bougainville rolls out awareness program. A very good evening. This is Sunday's News. I'm Malcolm Waira. Thank you for joining us. Prime Minister James Marape has defended the country's vote at the United Nations General Assembly against an immediate, durable and sustainable humanitarian truce between Israel and Hamas saying no reason justifies an act of terrorism. The Prime Minister explained by saying that Hamas triggered the current response from Israel, emphasizing that you cannot expect Israel to stop when the kidnapped victims have not yet been returned. He said that when you talk about human rights, it applies to both sides. The Prime Minister condemned the act, expressing that, not taking into consideration the underlying issues, the reference point of attacking innocent women and children is an act of terrorism. PNG is one of 14 countries that voted against the call for truce, alongside the United States and Israel. 120 countries voted in favor of, while 45 countries abstained. Marape said PNG's vote is a qualified one, emphasizing that hostages must be returned. He said when that happens, our position might change and we will call for peace to return. The Prime Minister said we made those statements considering what happened and the need for Hamas to be responsible for what happened. He said Hamas should do the right thing and return the kidnapped Israelis. Then he believes the international community will rally around the call for Israel to stop the bombing. He ended by saying, we have no regret in standing up for Israel as they were attacked. We have to support them. Natasha Ovoy, National MTV News. The University of Goroka and the Telaformin District Development Authority signed a memorandum of agreement yesterday in Port Moresby. This agreement will enable students from the district to study at the university. Member for Telaformin and Minister for Works and Highways, Solan Mirisim, along with the Vice Chancellor for UOG, Dr. Tang Waninga, officiated the signing. According to member for Teleforming Solan Mirisim, due to the district's critical location and isolation, the DDA has taken the initiative to send students to UOG to further their education in training and for the upskilling of the serving teachers. We need more teachers district in that district, in that particular district, because of the isolation and the remoteness. Therefore, DDA has taken the initiative to send students to Goroka University. The program will start next year and end in 2028. That will take five years and will be subjected for renewal for another five years. According to Mirisim, the district will cover all the cost and further elaborated on the process required. The well, district will be paying TDDA will be paying off all the school fees. The tickets and the allowances will be met by the parents or individuals. Most of them are teachers, most of them are public servants themselves. And those students who went to universities but went back home, who are doing nothing, will be given opportunity. Vice Chancellor for UOG, Dr. Tang Waninga, shared excitement towards this partnership and explained that the institution used its third mandate, which is the community service, to foster this partnership. Under this agreement, a total of 15 programs will be made available. Engagement to develop human resources for collectively for this country, and especially those districts that are remote that uh, many government services do not reach. And we all utterly accepted 
uh, a request made by the Honourable Minister to sign an MOU. Dr. Waninga further added that this agreement does not set any precedents, highlighting that given the Telefomin is one of the remote districts in the country. Uh, this is a special case where, you know, some districts are so remote and we want to help these districts so that uh, human resources and human educated communities can be distributed around the country. This agreement will cater for 40 students in the district starting next year on a yearly basis. Before the agreement ceases in 2028, a total of 200 students in the district will be educated under this agreement. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Leaders in districts and provinces across the country have been urged to consider the importance of early childhood learning and support where necessary, as this plays a pivotal role towards the development of, child, of children transcending from different levels of education. This call was made by the Vice-Chancellor for the University of Goroka during the signing of the agreement with Teleforming District in Port Moresby. PNG has transitioned to a new 366 model of education, which introduced a formal schooling to the earliest formative years of a child's education. As the new learning landscape takes roots, the Teleforming District Development Authority labeled this as one of the main areas to focus on when signing an agreement with the University of Goroka to accommodate for students in the districts. And one of the main areas that we are looking at is the, the, the education system that the government has introduced, 166 program and also facing our the elementary, elementary training and implementing the early childhood uh, education. We are, for most, we are focusing on sending teachers to Goroka University to study, uh, taking up diploma and degree on uh, early childhood. UOG Vice Chancellor Dr. Teng Waninga acknowledged the leadership of the member for Teleforming to prioritize early childhood learning and urged for other leaders to take the same approach. We can also organize if for the serving teachers, elementary teachers who are serving and may, may not have the qualification to teach to move on to the next level as a result of the structural changes in the National Department of Education. We will help uh, to go to the district to um, train them for, for an upgrade of qualification. Dr. Waninga revealed that under the signed agreement, training will be provided to the serving teachers, where they then will be awarded a diploma in early education. And we are also particularly very appreciative and um, happy because you are looking into early childhood. Early childhood is a key, key area where the national government, all provincial governments, all members should look into because better education will start very early and the attitudes and the discipline and the knowledge that we create very early in the, our children's lives are important and it builds into the other levels of uh, education so we appreciate that you see the importance of early childhood. The new early childhood education was launched by the National Department of Education in 2021. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Member for Teleforming and Minister for Works and Highways, Solan Mirisim, has revealed to the media his plans to establish more schools in his district starting next year. The minister made this statement during the signing of an agreement between the Teleforming District and the University of Goroka in Port Moresby. Also, we have three high schools and two secondary schools, and next year we're putting up another high schools. I have four LLGs in Telefomin District. That is Telefomin LLG, Oxapmin, Yapsi, and Edwaki, which Telefomin Secondary School, Oxapmin Secondary School, and we have established now the Edwaki High School. 
And uh, next year, or 2025, we will start establish a school in Yapsi. Yapsi is the LLG sharing border with the Republic of Indonesia. Wakonai LLG in the autonomous region of Bougainville will be a model district in Arab to roll out drug education and awareness training program. The training is facilitated and run by the National Narcotics Bureau Secretariat. It is aimed at upskilling and empowering youths who have been involved in the cultivation and distribution of marijuana throughout Arab. After three weeks of undergoing training on drug education and awareness, respectively in Buka and Wakunai, the trainees then received certificates on Friday. Distinguished guests and representatives from the PNG government, Department of Justice and Attorney General, and other important stakeholders were all present. It is a significant event for Arab in the law and justice sector as it encompasses the drawdown of powers from the national government function to the local level government and ward levels. Youths have been warned of a proliferating increase in social issues and lawlessness which will emerge as a result of marijuana consumption. This not training or program will become attending today. It's about trying to slow down, eliminate the, programs, the problem of drugs. This training empowers youths from the Wakunai area to advocate against marijuana consumption and cultivation in the area. All right, that means that Sawa Yukisim now, when you keep it to yourself, that knowledge will die out. Okay? So you have to go and continue to relay the message. Having seen the need for the people of Wakunai, the government has made an intervention through a joint partnership program to address this issue. Uh, autonomous region of Bougainville, think thing, don't blame, see? Like, come, look out more people, develop more people. Now, when you can think thing, ABG got long future, long Bougainville, and at least, look how we start on some government, this government, it has be black. Bougainville Law and Order Technical Committee Mechanism Chairman Kenneth Nane thanked the people of Wakunai for participating in this important training. All the world representatives from Terra, Narao, thank you, um, you Mr. Bantem. Amanda Ilaitia, National MTV News. The autonomous region of Bougainville government is embarking on advocating against illicit drugs consumption throughout Arab. This was revealed by the Bougainville Law and Justice Committee Mechanism Chairman and Secretary for the ABG Department of Justice and Law Sector, Kenneth Nanai. The lead agency, the National Narcotics Bureau, together with the Department of Justice and Attorney General, ABG Department of Justice and Law Sector, Directorate of Social Change and Mental Health Services and other stakeholders have unanimously collaborated to fight the consumption of illegal drugs in Bougainville. This follows a memorandum of understanding signed between the National Narcotics Bureau and ABG earlier this year. National Narcotics Bureau Deputy Director General Matthew Nelson said it is a prerogative of the national government to implement core objectives of the Bureau to address illicit drugs and substance abuse in Bougainville. Wakunai is the hub and the center and the heart of Bougainville. If the heart is not right, and I will say, frankly, independence and by heavy A drug education and awareness training was recently conducted in Buka to upskill and empower youth to carry out awareness. Concerned stakeholders who had undergone the training are from Wakunai area. The ABG's intervention in addressing the marijuana issue in the region is an important milestone in ABG law and justice space. Amanda Ilaitia, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us.
You're watching National MTV News. Papua New Guinea was selected as one of the countries to participate in the pilot program for climate resilience. The workshop was recently held in the autonomous region of Bougainville and facilitated by the Climate Change and Development Authority officers. The pilot program is part of the Strategy Climate Fund, a multi-donor trust fund within the Climate Investment Funds and provides financing through the multilateral development banks to support programs in the selected pilot countries. The Climate Change and Development Authority, in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program, began a one-week training workshop on climate change mainstreaming, disaster risk strategies, and emergency response simulations. This workshop was a component of Output 1 of the Building Resilience to Climate Change Project, a project funded by the Climate Investment Fund and administered by the Asia Development Bank. The workshop is being carried out following the climate change vulnerability assessments for the Duke of York Islands, which was conducted in 2021. The objective of the workshop is to mainstream climate adaption strategies and measures into the planning processes at the ward, district and possibly provincial levels and to enhance the capacity of local stakeholders to identify and address climate vulnerabilities and risk in development planning. The workshop also aims to provide local communities with comprehensive training on disaster risk strategies management and conduct practical emergency response simulation exercise to enhance the preparedness and response capabilities of participants. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. The provincial annual workshop for LLG leaders in the East New Britain province has been aimed at bringing together leaders in the LLGs to discuss development strategies and solutions for issues faced in the communities. Under the team empowering the LLGs for service delivery connectivity for our wards transformation, the East New Britain Provincial Administration held the annual conference for LLG leaders, particularly presidents and LLG managers at the Gazelle International Hotel recently. Nicholas Lame, the Deputy Provincial Administrator, emphasized the need for better communication between the administration and LLG presidents to utilize available funds. Lame made these remarks during the closing dinner for LLG leaders in Kokopo recently following the four days LLG leaders conference for all 23 LLGs in the province. He said that though these two key offices may be in one office and location, they often do not communicate. He added that East New Britain province still has these missed opportunities and continued connectivity issues. He stated that there is still funding totaling in millions of kinas for allergies, yet there is no communication of these funds. Allergy presidents, as the political heads of the allergies, are not aware that there are funds available. Lame further urged the allergies to start using these funds up until the second quarter of next year 2024. Speaking on behalf of the district administrators, Kokopo District Administrator John Talele expressed uncertainty about the full implementation of the program at LLGs and called for teamwork among all sectors of the provincial administration. He said that after the first conference last year, there was still some uncertainty on the full implementation of the program at the LLGs. He said that during the conference, LLG presidents had expressed concerns on connectivity of the administration and rollout of this program to communities. He reiterated on the acting provincial administrator's call for teamwork, saying the program cannot work if the members of the East New Britain provincial administration do not work together as a team. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. The people of Ward 14 community at Ahi Urban in Nawai District have been assured by their local MP Theo Pelgen that road works on the Ahi Ward 14 main road will commence immediately as the road has been neglected for many years. 
This assurance was made following Pelgan's visit to the areas along Nawai district with a technical team who were carrying out a survey in the area. The inspection team surveyed the road from the main entrance in from Limki Speedway, then directly into the main road aligned to all the blocks of land that accommodate people living along the corridor. MP Pelgan stated that the road upgrade was imminent and that funding allocation would be made to allow work to begin immediately. He said this road is vital because it links people right into Lay City and it is important that it is upgraded to allow people to have access to basic services in the city. Pelgan said there is so much to do, but with limited funds at hand, the district will do its best to improve and deliver services for the people. Gladys Skiller, National MTV News. A total of 275 grade 12 students from Bena Bena Secondary School graduated in the school's 19th graduation on Friday in Eastern Highlands Province. The day saw further good news for Bena Bena Secondary School. Under the theme Hard Work, Self-Discipline and Godly Principle Equals Success, the 19th graduation ceremony that was held on Friday also saw the official opening of the school's new teachers' 8-in-1 complex and computer lab commissioned by the Ungai Bena MP, Kinoka Feo. The MP also presented a tractor to the school board and management that will assist the school and students through their agriculture projects. MP Kinoka, who was the guest of honor, challenged the graduates to be serious in their aspirations for success as they continue on to another chapter of their lives. He also urged parents of the graduates to continue supporting their children. Sharing similar sentiments was the school principal, Mr. Peter Hasu, who said success needs to be earned through sheer hard work and commitment. He expressed that success in and through education comes as a result of contribution by both the students and their parents and guardians. Adding to the blessings of the day was the Education Director for Eastern Highlands Province, Albert Wesley, who declared that the Benabena Secondary School status will be changed to Benabena Agriculture Secondary School starting next year. Natasha Ovoy National, MTV News. Quitting should never be an option if we want to achieve something because we will never know the reward that awaits us if we give up before the race even ends. These were the words of Gwendolyn Wawi, who was one among the 18 women that graduated with certificates in basic sewing at Tellers D. Nazareth College. According to Gwendolyn, signing up for sewing classes at the Tellers D. Nazareth Training Center was neither a plan nor intention. Um, for me personally, I never really thought of the thought of taking up a sewing class. I came here with, with my aunt Grace, the one who just gave her speech um, on registration day to sign up for the class. And it turned out that I got signed up too. Gwendolyn had little knowledge about sewing. She knew basics of treading a needle and spinning the wheels of the sewing machine. However, after she signed up for the training, she found out that sewing is more than just needles and spinning the wheels but requires perseverance. At one point of time during the training, she almost gave up but seeing the courage from her other colleagues twice her age motivated her to complete her training. For Gwendolyn, this training has been a turning point where she got the opportunity to learn new things which she elaborates on. While attending the training, not only did I learn how to sew correctly by drafting the patterns, cutting the materials using the patterns, using the right stitch and the threads, but I have also learned to appreciate the clothes I put on every day. She recalls her mom was a very passionate woman who loved sewing, but they both were the opposite of each other. Whenever she tags alone with the mom and hand to the shops, they would go opposite directions. Gwendolyn would always visit the already sewn clothing section, admiring them without paying attention to how they were sewn. 
Gwendolyn said sewing is a basic life skill that will enable young girls to be self-reliant. She said although she almost gave up, she kept the head held high. Hence, she is now calling on young girls to acquire basic life skills training that will sustain them in the long run. Gladys Skilla, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The Grass Skirt Project's third annual Heavy Air Cup and Wellness Expo has played their grand final yesterday at the Santos National Football Stadium in Port Bosby. In an exciting conclusion of the 2023 Heavy Air Cup final held at the National Football Stadium over the weekend, the couple among the Sharks emerged victorious in the female division, while the Gananama claimed the victory in the men's division. All four teams have played in the grand final were given vouchers by the host for their hard work and contribution in the 2023 Ever Cup. The two-day competition, which 32 teams participated, showcased exceptional sportsmanship, emphasizing the team of challenging attitudes and behaviors to address the root causes of gender-based violence through sport. The co-founder and managing director of the Grass Cat Project, Tahina Boot, explained the importance of hosting this sporting event. Absolutely. 45% of teams have come from outside of Port Moresby. We know that our regional remote communities do not have access to health services, nor do they have access to services in general. We have that at Havea Cup and Wellness Expo. We had over 23 different exhibitors, you know, international organisations, locally based organisations that were uh, educating in sexual and domestic violence prevention, in um, sexual and reproductive health. We had fitness enthusiasts, like showing people how to, you know, work out properly. Um, this is all about access to health. This is all about ending gender-based violence. Tahina Boot also acknowledges the teams who have participated in the competition and said she is very happy and ecstatic and looking forward to host the next Avea Cup. Together by learning and rugby league is the hook. So yes, I feel very happy, very, very ecstatic that all these players that had come here had come to learn, you know, and they've done that through rugby league. So this is a very successful event and we can't wait to roll this out in other, um, other areas. Supporting this important sporting event, the major sponsors are Brian Bell Foundation and Group, with the golden sponsors, the Sanctuary Hotel Resort, Spa and MTV, and silver and bronze supporter sponsors. Louis Mangu Trukai Sports. To address gender-based violence, the Grass Skirt Project hosted the Hevea Cup. This sporting event not only showcased the athletic skills of young men and women in rugby league, but is also aimed at starting positive changes in the communities. The Avea Cup serves as a platform for promoting gender equality and violence prevention. Young participants from different backgrounds and provinces converged to not only engage in competitive rugby, but also foster an environment of mutual respect and understanding. The Avea Cup serves as a platform for promoting gender equality and violence prevention. Young participants from different backgrounds and provinces converged to not only engage in competitive rugby, but also foster an environment of mutual respect and understanding. Co-founder of the Grass Cat Project expressed profound satisfaction witnessing the enthusiastic participation of the youth, who travelled from far and wide to be part of this transformative event. Really happy that the, the teams that were playing, um, we had one particular team from Kikori that travelled seven hours down the Parari River 
and then, you know, hopped on a PM3 from K-Town all the way to Port Moresby, you know. So this event is, is for the whole country. Um, we want to invite more teams from different areas to come and play, but most importantly, come and learn how you can end violence in your community because that's what Havea Cup and Wellness Expo is about. The game not only showcased raw talent in rugby, but also incorporated workshops and discussions on violence prevention, empowering participants with knowledge and strategies to create change within their communities. You know, we want to change the mindsets of young people. You know, our young people are amazing. They really are. You know, and you saw them today in those beautiful uniforms. They looked amazing. You know, when, when someone looks amazing and feels amazing, they are amazing, you know, and that's what we want to ignite, you know, that everybody is a leader, you know, and this particular environment enables our young people to feel special, you know, because we, Havea Cup wants them to know that they are, you know, and this is a, a space of learning and playing and having fun. The combination of sports and education demonstrated the Grasskets project's commitment to general development and its belief in the power of sports as a facilitator for social change. Louis Maingu, Trukai Sports. Port Moresby's Harley Queens Rugby Union Club showcased their prowess in day one of the 50th Cobra Tense International in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The two-day competition featuring teams from New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, Singapore, Fiji and host Malaysia is currently on this weekend in Petaling Jaya, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. With an impressive roster of 16 players, the Harley Queens faced formidable opponents in three intense games, securing victories in two of them. The team made their debut in the tournament with a stellar performance, triumphing over Auckland's Ranga Beasts with a scoreline of 12 to 5 points. They carried this momentum into their second game, where they dominated South Africa's NTK with a commanding 22 to nil points win. Despite a valiant effort in the third game against Daveta Rugby Fiji, the Harley Queens displayed unwavering determination, ultimately falling with a score of 7 to 38 points. Harley Queens head coach Billy Rapila shared his thoughts, stating that the team's objective is to come out to get exposure for the players. Coach Rapila said that by participating in the Cobra Tens International, the Harley Queens Club not only showcased their skill but also demonstrated their commitment to developing players and embracing challenges on the international stage. He said the club looks forward to building on this experience and continuing to elevate their game in future competitions when they return home. Today saw the final day of competitions in the Cobra Tens International. Natasha Avoid Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. You're watching Chukai Sports. Papua New Guinea tennis ace Matthew Stubbings and champion woman footballer Ramona Padio are the flag bearers for Team PNG at the 17th Pacific Games in Honiara, Solomon Islands this month. The duo will lead the team into the national stadium on the 19th of November during the opening ceremony of the Games. The PNG Olympic Committee made this announcement on Friday the 10th of November in Port Mosby during the Team PNG farewell ceremony. Prime Minister James Marape is hoping to jet into Honiara from his APEC Leader Summit visit in San Francisco to attend the official opening of the 2023 Pacific Games. The Solomon Islands Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavare expressed that it will be an honor to have Pacific leaders attend the Pacific Games alongside the team members. Prime Minister Marape is scheduled to take on the APEC leaders' podium with 20 other APEC economies from the 11th to the 17th of this month, where he will also have sideline meetings with the leaders attending. The 2023 Pacific Games official opening is on the 19th of this month in Honiara, where Solomon Islands Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavare will address the nation and the Pacific. 
Prime Minister Marape has been invited by his counterpart Prime Minister Sogavare and the government of Solomon Islands said it is ready to have PNG Joint Security Force team up to help provide security for the duration of the Games. It is noted that PNG will be sending the biggest contingent of 515 member PNG team of athletes among others. Furthermore, PNG businesses, the largest setup in Solomon Islands, are ready to welcome and help the PNG contingent who will be there for the three weeks event. Natasha Ovoi, Chukai Sports. That ends Chukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours. For the southern region, Port Mosby City mostly fine. Pobondeta partly cloudy with brief showers. To the Mombasa region, Lay City partly cloudy with possible shower or two. Vanimo, rain showers and possible thunderstorms. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, partly cloudy with a shower or two and possible thunderstorms. Buka, mostly fine. To the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, partly cloudy. Mendy and Wabeg, partly cloudy with a shower or two. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Sunday, the 12th of November, 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG.